go out to the HR and P guest line right now. We're pumped up about our next guest. He played for the Astros from 2008 to 2011. He's a two time All Star, and you watch him on the AT&T Sportsnet. Michael Bourne joins us now. Michael, it's Jake, BK, and Cody. Thanks so much for a couple minutes today. Great to get you on. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate coming on. Absolutely. So let's start with this current Astros team. Then I got some questions for you about your career and, of course, being from here and how cool that must have been to get a chance to play for the hometown team. What have you made of this Astros team? Obviously, not a great week for them, a 2-4 and four homestand. But all in all, your thoughts on, on how this team has looked overall in 2022 so far? I think they look great overall. Actually, you know, they, they've done every fashion of the game pretty much. They hit. They have time to hit them at that. They can hit for power. Uh, they also can steal if they need to. They can run. Uh, they play pretty good defense overall, and they pitch. You know, they uh, you know, people thought pitching was going to be a question mark for them coming in, but to me, they've done pretty good. And they lead the division once again, so you know, they in playoff contention once again, and I expect them to win the division. I think that they'll have a chance at uh, you know, winning the whole thing, and I'm pretty sure that's their goal for this year. Michael, got to ask you about center field. The Astros have been playing two center fielders, sort of a rotation right now. You didn't spend. Much of your career in a rotation, you were kind of an everyday center fielder type of guy. How difficult is that for a center fielder? How tough is that for a team, from maybe a pitcher standpoint, the other outfielders, to kind of switch back and forth between who the center fielder is and, you know, maybe not know until you show up at the ballpark who the guy out there is in center field? That's a good question. You know, most pitchers like the defensive center fielder like that. And like you said, I never was a rotation guy. Maybe towards the end, maybe a little bit, but for the most part, I pretty much play center field every day um, throughout my whole career, which I think gives you a, gives you not a better rhythm on the defensive side, but a better rhythm at the plate. That's I think that's the biggest thing that hurts the center fielders at, at the plate. They're not seeing the ball every day. And baseball, of course, is a hand-eye coordination game, which I think it benefits you when you're in there every day. So uh, I know they're real high on Jake Myers. He's coming off an injury. He's still in his rehab process, I think. So I really don't know the, the whole plan for them, but – I know Sirius pretty good out there. You know, they, they they got two great center fielders, but, you know, that's their plan. And sometimes the team goes with that, especially nowadays in baseball. You know, sometimes you have that revolving door, and that's what they seem to like they're going with. And they've been winning with it, so, you know, they don't have to really worry about it too much. Michael, I think everybody who makes it to the big leagues remembers their first season, and they remember their first few at-bats. And, look, some guys never figure it out. Some guys it takes a couple of years for them to figure out. And then there's Jeremy Pena who has seemingly had it figured out from day one. What have you made from the Astros' rookie shortstop? How quickly he's been able to adapt to the big league level? Well, I, I gave him a nickname early on. I call him Babyface Payne. You know, he, he looks like a little kid out there. <laughs> kid enjoying his time. Uh, I think he's great, man. Defensively, early on in the season, I read a stat that I was looking over, studying him a little bit, that he was leading the league in defensive run saves at shortstop. And that's impressive for a rookie. I don't know if it's still like that. It might have changed over time, but... Uh, when I looked at that, I was like, man, and, you know, it's hard to come in, you know, I tell you, and feel a shortstop position like that when somebody like a Carlos Correa leaves. You know, you're not talking about a normal shortstop. You're talking about a, a all-star shortstop, a, a number one pick overall shortstop that been only with the Astros and everybody in the organization knows who he is and he was a leader in the clubhouse. So, to me, he's exceeded expectations so far of what he should be because that's just not easy to do. To someone like I compare it to, like I can't compare it all the way, but kind of how like LeBron was when he first came in. Not the same exact thing, but LeBron had to fill in shoes because he was expected to be great right when he stepped in those shoes. And so was Pena. Mm. And man, he's exceeded it, man. I know it's not the same exact thing, but he done very well. I'm very impressed with him, and I think they got a star in the making. Michael Bourne is our guest, former Astros center fielder, two time All Star. Now you watch him on ATT Sportsnet as an Astros analyst. He's joining us here on the HRNP a guest line. Michael, in your career, I'm sure you faced Justin Verlander. So what has it been like watching him still be this dominant into his late 30s, continuing to go out there and look every bit like a guy who, when he last pitched, he won the Cy Young Award in 2019? So one thing I will say, when you're young, you know, you can just do whatever because your body is a pretty much, if you made it to this level, you're a superb, I, I would say just athlete, but you're a superb player, you know, but he's a pitcher, so he has a superb arm, right? So, you can go out there and do whatever you want to do. I think the biggest thing that he probably has done as he got later on in his career is maintenance on the body. And I'm pretty sure he's done a lot of shoulder work and he stays on a certain routine. And I'm very impressed. Anybody that's later in their thirties and can still dominate like he's doing, you have to tip the cap to him. And he's doing just that. 
He's leading their rotation. He's probably giving some of the youngsters some good advice every day when they're around him. And that's how they're learning. You know, they'll continue to learn and they'll continue to build and they probably continue to watch him and watch how he works. And that's how you learn. And that, that rotation is stable. And I think they can make some noise in the playoffs as long as he's leading the way. Michael, we knew Jordan Alvarez was good, but June, it's been incredible. He obviously got the contract extension, but the guy's hitting 500. The on-base percentage is over 500 for the month. What makes him so tough? What makes him so dangerous at the plate? We know about the raw power when baseballs are dead as ever, but what else about Jordan just makes him so good at the plate? So I think it's two things. I think one thing is that he recognizes the moment that he's in when he's at the plate. Uh, another thing is that he does not try to do too much when he's at the plate. What I mean by that is that, like, so for instance, I'll take myself for instance. Like, I was more of a gap-to-gap hitter, uh, contact hitter. I hit you a long ball here and there. But I think he takes that approach, but he has way more just raw power in his body than I did. So he doesn't try to do too much, and he still gets the result that he's looking for. And what I mean by he recognizes the moment, um, I think about a week and a half ago, he had two game-winning hits, once against Seattle, one against maybe it was Kansas City. I might be wrong on that name on the last one. But what I noticed about it is that he wasn't trying to do too much at the plate. He recognized the moment. You know, he knew what moment he in. He knew it was at the end of the game. And he really dialed in. And they had a shift on him, and he took the ball the other way off a curveball against Seattle, I think. And then the other one, he hit it in the right center gap. So, for me, he recognizes what people are trying to do to him. And he uses pole to pole, man. He uses the whole field, which I think certain hitters don't do. And that's what makes him so good because he can beat you in any kind of way. You're going to have to – to me, if I'm an opposing team, I would just try to walk him if I can. You know, he's the person that you – when you're in the pitching pitching room and going over the whole team, he is the first person that's mentioned in in that meeting. Don't let him beat you. You know, that's that's what they're talking about right now when he comes up in the meeting because he's amazing and he's doing his thing, man. He's he's a he's what I call a special talent. And like you say right now, I actually think he can just walk up there with his eyes closed and hit right now. That's how he's seen <laughs> the ball. <laughs> uh, he's been that good. It looks like a beach ball to him up there. It feels like, hey, Michael, kind of want to shift gears here for a second. You, of course, played your college ball at the University of Houston. Uh, last week we found out that starting next year, the Cougs are moving to the Big 12. What, uh, what did you make when you heard that news? <laughs> I think that should bring us a better recruit for us, man. I, you know, I'm a, I just got through uh, talking to a kid. They was they, they had a U of H camp, so you know, I'm a I'm always a Cougar for life. You know, I'm mad that we didn't get to make the regional this year. You know, we you, we look forward to that. And uh, man, I'm I'm on a text with all our all our, all my former Cougar players that I played with from 2001 to 2003, and we talk about memories. You know, those memories that we created then, we were able to make it to two Super Regionals. Yeah. Didn't crack the World Series, but I think that's a great move for them all the way around, and I and I wish them the best, man. I want them to get back, especially on the baseball page, to get back to doing it how we was doing it back then. The basketball team, the football team, is making some good noise, so we got to get that baseball team back rolling like they should be. And uh, I think next year, hopefully, Coach Whitten brings in some good recruits coming in this year, next year, and I think they'll have a good year. And I, I, I want to see them in the regional, man. I want to attend some games and, and, and you know, root them on. And hopefully, if they make it to Omaha, I'm definitely making the trip. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Boyd with us here, of course, former Astros outfielder and a Cougar at heart as well. Michael, in your career, what was the most exciting aspect of, of being a guy who grew up in Houston, went to UH, and obviously had the opportunity to play for the Astros and even make an all-star team when you were here in Houston playing for the Strohs? You know, the the dynamic of being able to play in your hometown is just amazing. You know, like, uh, I don't think you can really put that into words, what that means. You know, like, I, you know, to get that call that I was getting traded to Houston – you know, being at a friend house and just over there playing the NBA Live and get that call, it was like, oh, my goodness, I'm getting to go play for my hometown team. So when people ask me, they always ask me, like, who's my favorite team? I take Houston out the question because that, that trumps every card, period. You know, and I, I'll i never take that for granted. I, I was a kid that rooted on for the Astros, and, you know, I played my college ball here. I played my high school ball here. I went to high school, went to middle school, elementary. So I'm a Houstonian. <clears throat> And for me to get that opportunity, I mean, you know, like all of it just in all, just going to the ballpark and driving there and knowing this where I grew up at, I took that, I took that like 
I wouldn't say personal, but it was personal, kind of like just like, man, I get to come out here and play on this grass that I, you know, I was watching these watching this team play on HSC, which is way back in the day, Houston Sports Entertainment. But I loved it. I enjoyed every bit of it. And I was it was a bittersweet moment when I got traded because. You know, you know the business of baseball. Like we wasn't that good at the time. We had some good players with me and Hunter and a few others, but we wasn't performing as a team. So, you know, they wanted to tear it down. You know, they was getting a new owner, so they wanted to rebuild and they had to go to Atlanta. But Atlanta was winning, so you know, I like to win. So <laughs> I like that part of it. But <laughs> we were I didn't. I wasn't gonna get to play at home anymore. You know, my mother and father got to come watch me a lot to come. And uh, you know, that don't happen a lot. Your parents can't come watch you a lot of your games mm. because they're probably not living in the town that you play in. So they were able to do that. So we always cherish that moment. I will always uh, have a special place for Ed Wade because he gave me that opportunity to come play in my play in my hometown. He was a former GM that was with me with the Phillies and was with me with the Astros. So shout out to Ed Wade. I will always have that special place in my heart for him for, for letting me experience that opportunity. Michael, finally, before we let you go, do you miss the hill out in center field? You're the perfect guy to ask any hill-related question at Minute Maid Park. You know what, man? It, it, that's 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 a good question because now they made it easy for the center fielders to make the plays, man. I had to go battle that hill so many times and and you know run run sprints up that hill as I'm doing as I as if I'm doing hill work um, to to catch a lot of balls, man. You know, but it also gave me more opportunities to make some plays and you know go on to win two gold gloves here. So I I can't say I do miss it. I do because. It's, it's a it's a dynamic part of a field that was that was in and like unlike any other park pretty much and I I miss it I do I don't know why they took it away you know I don't think I don't think it was doing that much damage and I was able to make some unbelievable catches out there so yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thankful I'm thankful for that amazing uh, thankful that they had it out there actually because I made one of my best catches on it by falling down and catching it yeah. I got lucky and uh, <laughs> I'm thankful I made the catch though so yeah I do miss Tiles Hill I do I do. Michael, we really appreciate the time, man. Continued success, and thanks so much for a couple minutes today. Thank you. I appreciate y'all for calling me. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button down below, and of course, subscribe to my channel. And if you're a Houston sports fan, listen to ESPN Houston 97.5 FM or 92.5 FM weekdays from 3 to 7 every afternoon.